How are you, my friends? This is lecture number six of the Calculus One course, the derivative and the rates of change. In the objectives of this lecture, we see the derivative of a function, the four-step process to find the derivative, which is very, very important, differentiation of quadratic functions, differential notation for the derivative, the average and instantaneous rates of change, velocity and acceleration, and the vertical motion. Now we start directly with the derivative of a function. It will be f prime of x. It will be the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h as h goes to zero. Now to find the derivative, follow the four steps. Easy, write the definition of the derivative, which is this one here, the yellow. Find expressions for f of x plus h, and then also f of x is given. Simplify the result here, all this, and by algebraic methods, and then find the limit. So the derivative as a slope predictor. If we have a curve, and we need a tangent line at a point A, F of A. So the slope of this tangent line will be the M. And then we can use the famous formula for the equation of a line, Y minus Y1 is equal M X minus X1. X1, Y1 is the point, and M is the slope, which is F prime at A. Then this will be the equation of the tangent line. Now, this is a very important question. Given the function f of x, 1 over x, apply the definition of the derivative to differentiate the given function. So we need the derivative first. Now, for the b part, find the equation of the tangent line to the given function at x equals 5 to the power minus 1. So this is x1. Now, let's try here to find the four step process we write the formula for the derivative f prime and then we apply it f of x plus h means we put x plus h in the function so it becomes 1 over x plus h f of x we write it here minus 1 over x and then divided by h we try to simplify here the two simple fractions subtracting the lcd will be x plus h x and this is x minus the bracket here x plus h. So we try here to expand more x minus x minus h. Simplify the expression. There is a uh, cancellation here in the h. So we get minus 1 divided by x plus h times x. Let's find the limit as h goes to 0. We replace h by 0. We get minus 1 over x squared. This is the derivative of this function. So we can use that to find the slope of the tangent line at x. Now the b part, this is the function f of x, 1 over x, and this is f prime, we have found minus 1 over x squared. The point of tangency where the tangent line is x equals 5 to the power minus 1. So I put this x here, which is 1 over 5. I will put it here, x 1 over 5. So y1 will be 5. So the point 1 over 5, 5. And now the slope is m, f prime at the point x. So in the x here, in f prime, I put 1 over 5. And then I square it here. It will be minus 25. That's the slope. The equation of the tangent line, y minus y1 is equal m times x minus x1. Put the numbers there. You get the equation of the tangent line. Another example with another function Let's apply the definition, do the same thing. f of x, now we have square root of x. Remember, the derivative f prime of x is equal m of x. And now here we need to find the equation of the normal line to the given function at x equals 9. Now to find the derivative of this function f of x is equal to square root of x, we have to start with the definition for the derivative f prime. So we write limit of square root of x plus h if we replace x plus h in the function here minus square root of x divided by h 
Try to replace h by zero. We put zero here, zero there. So we get square root of x minus square root of x, so which is zero over zero. That is a problem. So we have to do something to evaluate the limit. So we need to rationalize the numerator. We have seen this idea in the algebra course. You can rationalize the numerator. Also, you can rationalize the denominator. So let's multiply up and down by the conjugate. See, this is the minus here. So the conjugate will be square root of x plus h plus square root of x up and down. You multiply to simplify. So he, and in the numerator here, we have a difference between two squares. So that would be x plus h minus x. Here we have h times all this bracket. Now we cancel x minus x, that will be zero. h over h times this expression. So we cancel the h, we get one over this. Now we replace h by zero. So we get one over square root of x plus square root of x. So the derivative f prime will be one over two square root of x. That would be now a formula. If this is the function, this is the derivative. For the b part, we have the function f of x square root of x, and we have found the derivative to be f prime of x, one over two square root of x. Let's find the point of tangency at x equals nine. So x of one is nine, so y one will be f of x one, square root of nine, which is three. So x one, y one will be nine and three. The slope of the tangent line is m, which is f prime at nine equals one over two square root of nine, which is one over six. Now we need the slope of the normal line m sub n, which is minus one over m because the product of the slopes is minus one. So the slope of the normal line is minus six. Let's find the equation of the normal line using the formula y minus y1 is equal m for the normal line times x minus x1. Just put the values there, y minus three is equal minus six for the slope x minus nine. Distribute the minus six, so we get y equals minus six x plus 57. This is the equation of the normal line. Now example number three, given the function f of x three x squared minus four x plus five, find the slope of the tangent line to the given function at x equals minus 10. Now we know this is a quadratic function where the graph is a parabola. And we have seen in example seven in lecture three in the calculus one, the general formula for the slope. So if f of x is equal a x squared plus bx plus c in general, then f prime will be 2ax plus b. We have found this derivative by the definition. So a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of the x, and x itself is the given minus 10. So we find the slope which is f prime at minus 10, which is 2, times three times minus 10, and the b by itself is minus four. So this is minus 60 minus four, so the slope will be minus 64. Now, differential notation. We can have one, two, three, four, five ways we can write notations for the derivative. We can write, you can see it's so easy here, f prime of x. This is the way you read it, f prime of x. So that will help you. f prime of x, this is the way we read it. This is y prime, which is the same meaning. dy, dy over dx, this is the way we read it. Let's go back. Okay. And this is df over dx. This is the way we read that. And this is df of x over dx. So this is the way we write differential notation. This is for the derivative. Five ways.
the applications of derivative. We can use derivative. It can work as slope predictor. We have mentioned that for tangent lines. When you find the derivative, you can use it as the slope of the tangent lines. You can use it as rate of change. We will see that in the coming two examples. And also we can use the derivative for the positive slope. If the slope is positive, that means the function is increasing. See, Q is increasing at time T. If DQ over DT is positive, so if the slope of the tangent line is positive, that means the, the graph is increasing. And also if the slope is negative, then the curve is decreasing. Now this is the rate of change. Nice application of the derivative. If Q is equal F of T, a quantity that varies with time, something changing or varying with time, then the instantaneous rate of change will be dq over dt, which is f prime. Remember, this is instantaneous rate of change. Now, q, when we say q here, it's a function. Q might be the size of a population, the number of dollars in a bank. It can be volume of a balloon. It can be distance traveled in t hours. So it can be any quantity representing some function. Now, if it takes you four hours to drive 200 miles, what will be the average speed? Now in this slide, I will explain the difference between the average speed and the instantaneous velocity. You will see the difference now. Just this is a simple question. If it takes you four hours to drive 200 miles, this is the average, remember average speed. It will be 200 directly, take the distance, divide by time, it will be 50 miles per hour. Every hour you drive 50 miles. This is average, this is average speed. So we can say average velocity also, which is almost the same distance divided by elapsed time. So delta x divided by delta t. That's the same average speed and average velocity. Now the instantaneous, that means we need the velocity at each second or minute. At each time we need. So this is instantaneous velocity. It will be v, the limit of delta x divided by delta t as delta t goes to zero. That means every single increment in the time we need the velocity, which is f prime of the function. f of t will be the position function. So we call it f of t is the position function. So velocity now is instantaneous rate of change of position. Remember that. Velocity is the instantaneous rate of change of position. Velocity can be positive, can be negative. If we say find the speed, it is the absolute value of the velocity. So that's always positive. Speed is always positive. Let's look at nice easy example here. A car is moving along a horizontal x-axis. Suppose its position function in feet at time t in seconds is given by this x of t is equal 5t squared plus 100. So this is the position function. Find the velocity at time t. So we need the velocity at time t. How long the car traveled in 10 seconds? In 10 seconds, we need to find how long the car traveled. See, this is the position function, x of t is equal 5t squared plus 100. The velocity will be, v will be x prime, the derivative of the position function, which is 10t. We have seen the formula for the quadratic function, 10t. Now we find the starting point where the car starts, x at zero. 
So it will be at 100. You see, if you go back to the graph here, you see at 100, this is the starting point, x at time zero. Put zero there, it will be at 100. After 10 seconds, the distance will be x of 10. So five times 10 squared plus 100 will be 600. So the car traveled at a distance of 500. Why 600 minus 100? It will be 500 feet in 10 seconds. Now vertical motion, if a particle is projected straight upward, like we, we throw a ball or something with initial height, y sub zero above the ground at t is equal to zero seconds with initial velocity v zero then the height will be y of t remember this is the height y of t minus half g t squared plus v zero t plus y zero remember these are the initial height y zero initial velocity v zero g now is the acceleration due to force of gravity. So G always 32 feet per second squared or G will be approximately 9.8 meters per second squared. Now if we differentiate Y here, or well, let's go back to the formula. If we differentiate Y, so we get Y prime, which is the velocity. Now by using the quadratic function we have seen before, it will be minus GT plus V zero. Now the acceleration is the instantaneous rate of change of the velocity here. So A is the acceleration, V is equal V prime, which is only minus G. Now let's look here, we, we throw, find the maximum height attained by a ball thrown. So we throw a ball here, see, throw a ball, it will go to some distance and then it will come back to ground. Find the maximum height attained by a ball thrown straight upward from the ground with initial velocity 96 feet per second. This is the initial velocity. <coughs> Sorry. Now let's look at example six. We have here two parts. Find the maximum height attained by a ball thrown straight upward from the ground with initial velocity 96 feet per second. So we need the maximum height. In the B part, we need the velocity when it hits the ground. The first one, we write the given V0 is 96 feet per second, G is 32. We know the height function is y of t is equal to this one. And the velocity is the derivative of this y prime minus gt plus v0. Put the numbers here. So the v, the velocity or at time t will be minus 32t plus 96. Now the important part here is to know that at maximum height, the velocity is zero. So I take the velocity here and make it zero. Then I find the time it will take to reach the maximum height. So t will be 96 divided by 32, which is three seconds. Now to find y max, put all these numbers in the height function, y of t, which will give you y max, 144 feet. Now the second one, here we need the velocity when the ball hits the ground. So this will be y zero, there is no height at all. So y is zero. So I take the y function, y of t, put it equal to zero and find a time. So it takes here six seconds. Then v impact will be v velocity at time six. So I take the velocity here minus 32 times six plus 96 is v zero. It will be minus 96 feet per second. Always check the playlist, please. Calculus 1 solved questions. There are many questions there to help you understand the lectures more. This is the end of lecture number six of the Calculus 1 course.
Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it with your friends. I hope I can see you in another video with another topic. Thank you guys for listening.